Determining the correct push rod length on your next engine build isn't difficult, but it is critical if you want a good stable valve train that's going to last a long time. Now for every engine build this needs to be done because there's a lot of factors that can affect correct push rod length. Everything from whether or not your block has been decked, the type of cylinder heads you're running, the machine work that's been done on the cylinder head, heck even the height of the lifters you're running. So let's work our way through the process and I'll show you how it's done. First of all, you're going to need the actual rocker arms that you're going to run on the engine build. And then you don't need a lot of specialized tools, but you do need a few. First of all, we're going to have two lightweight checking springs. These will replace the valve springs when we're checking for push rod length. We'll need one or two adjustable push rods. These are inexpensive and available from any number of online sources. And then also some method for marking the top of the valve stems. And you can either use machinist die or just a simple black sharpie, whatever works for you. We'll do both just to show you how it works. You can see I've already got it installed here, but you will need a set of the actual lifters that you're going to be running. Go ahead and make sure they're installed in uh, the first pair of lifter bores. The first step is actually going to be to pull the valve springs off the cylinder head. You can do this with the head on the block or off depending on the equipment that you've got. The reason that you've got to do that is the adjustable push rod has a tiny threaded portion that runs in and out. It's not as strong as a real deal push rod. So if you try to run the engine over with this push rod in place, the valve springs can actually put enough pressure on the push rod to bend it. Now, as I mentioned, you can do this either with the head on or off the block, depending on the tools you have to take the valve springs off. I like to do it with the head on the block. It's just simpler. I've got a valve spring remover from Moroso that I use. And the first step is just to attach a hose from a leak down kit and hit it with some pressurized air to keep the valve spring up against the seat. My own head valve spring compressor just connects to the rocker arm stud and then with the air pressure holding the valve against the seat, I can compress the spring, pop the locks out, and replace the valve spring with the lightweight checking spring. The whole point of the checking spring is just to put a lightweight spring underneath the valve so you can compress it easy and always pops back up into place. And now I just need to repeat the process with the intake. All right, now that we've got that little bit of prep work out of the way, we can get started. I've got my adjustable push rod. It's mostly threaded down about as short as it'll go. And I'm gonna drop it in place through the push rod hole and into the lifter cup. Now notice that I don't have my push rod guide plates in place. They'll need to be there for the final build, but right now for fit up, the uh, nuts on the adjustable push rod get in the way and they contact it. So I had to take them off and then set the rocker arm into place just like you would for final assembly. Now here's the trick of the deal, and I'm using a set of Urson's aluminum rocker arms, but this works with any roller rocker, okay? So we want the rocker tip to roll across the center of the valve stem. If it stays too high or too low, it puts offset pressure on the valve stem and it's gonna wear your valve train out. So the way we want the rocker arm is to start a little bit high and then as the engine rolls over and it presses the valve stem down to open up the valve, it rolls across the center of the valve and then back up again. So the way we're going to check this is we are going to mark the tip of the valve stem in a way that we can see how the valve rolls over it. So we will use a little machinist die there. If you don't have machinist die, you can actually use a Sharpie. That works well too. Just cover it up with ink about like that and then put the rocker arm back on. Run the adjuster nut down, just finger tight until you've taken up all the slack. About like that. Now this is a solid lifter and cam setup and normally you'd have some lash in here, but for this we just wanna take out all the lash, but we don't wanna have it squeezed down too tight. By hand and gently, roll the engine over a few times to cycle the valve train through. Now one issue you can run into is that the roller tip rolls too gently over the top of the valve stem and it doesn't really make a mark especially if you're using sharpie so one thing you can do is just kind of hold your finger over the roller so you keep it from rolling as it goes through and it will help make a better mark just go through about three or four rotations and you should be good okay let's see what we got now the lifter is back on the base circle of the cam so it's all the way loose and we'll pull this off and you can see the mark right there 
So you can see the mark starts up here and comes down to about here. It may be a little tough to see on the screen, uh, but it looks like it's just a little bit too high. It's towards the upper third of the valve stem, and I'd like to move it down a little bit. I want to lengthen the push rod. So with my adjustable push rod, all I've got to do is spin it out just a little bit and drop it back into place. Now, generally speaking, if you're doing it right, if you want to move the mark down or lower on the valve stem tip, you lengthen the push rod. If you want to move it higher, you shorten the push rod. I'll just clean my mark off, try it again, and we'll see what we get this time. There, it looks like the line that the rocker has printed on the valve stem tip is a little bit clearer and easier to see. That's definitely because I didn't let it dry as long. Uh, you can see it a lot better there. Now you can see that the rocker line on the valve stem tip is just about centered up. If anything, you want it a little bit higher than low as it rolls across. But this looks good. We're going to keep that. Okay, so we've got the correct push rod length for the exhaust side. I'm going to pull the adjustable push rod out being very careful not to spin the end so I don't change my length. And then I just need to measure it so I know what to order. Looks like I need to order up a set of seven 400s. The last thing for me to do is to repeat the process with the intake side here, just to ensure that the push rod lengths need to be the same. They're not always, so be careful there. And I'm good to go. Hey, thanks for watching.